Hey there, it's David. Are any of these questions your questions? Am I doomed to live a life that's less than what God intends for me? Am I resigned to live in the shadow of someone else's expectations of me? Does this world get to decide who I am? Do I have to fit into a specific box? Do I have to accept any and all labels? This island shouts from the mountaintops a resounding no. You're so much more than any box, any label, any expectation, and any intention. You're so much more than you could ever fathom. For who you are is always evolving. As you learn, as you take risks, and as you believe, you become. As you become, you grow. As you grow, you learn. As you learn, you experience. As you experience, you become. As you become, you grow. As you grow, you learn. As you learn, you experience. As you experience, you become, and on, and on, and on, and on. On this island, you're invited to be real with yourself, with God, and with others. You're invited to surrender your secrets and take off your masks. The only thing that you have to do on this island is to be you. Allow God to meet you, the real you, right here, right now, and allow God to walk with you into who you will become. Let's go island hopping. Now that you've committed your life to the care and control of Jesus, it's time that you embraced a vital truth. A truth that will make it possible for you to experience, to grow, and to become. To become who God intends for you to be right here, right now. In other words, a truth that will make it possible for you to be perfect. A complete you in this time and in this place. What is this truth? Secrets are relationship killers. Secrets build walls that are so formidable that not even God will break through. For you can't be real while living under a secret. And if you can't be real, you can forget about having genuine, lasting relationships with anyone, especially God. Who you're pretending to be right here, right now, is preventing you from being all that God has created you to be right here, right now. Who you're pretending to be is also preventing you from forming real, lasting relationships with others. Worse yet, the performance that you're putting on for all of the people you feel are judging you is preventing you from being the real you. All of this pretending is destroying your relationships with yourself, with God, and with others in your life. Even if you find yourself with many relationships right now, if secrets are casting a shadow over these relationships, they aren't real. How could any relationship be real when you aren't being real? All of this pretending, all of your secrets are creating a life that is nothing more than the embodiment of a fear that you aren't good enough. Deep down, you believe that nobody will love you if they really know you. Because of your secrets, you believe that you don't measure up. You don't deserve to be loved for simply being you. Well, never forget that everything that you do, the secrets that you keep, are all influenced and motivated by what you believe. If you want to know what someone believes, just follow them around and watch what they do. If you believe that your secrets are too big and too horrible, if you believe that nobody, not even God, will love you if they knew the truth, you will keep your secrets. In this keeping of your secrets, you will prevent yourself from forming real and lasting relationships in your life. Conversely, If you believe that your secrets don't get to define who you are, and if you believe that your secrets don't get to dictate who you will be, 
Then you'll surrender your secrets and you'll take off your masks for they have no power over you. Thus, the door will be wide open for you to form real and lasting relationships in your life. The choice is up to you. Surrender your secrets or keep your secrets. Now, I'm not going to lie. Both options present their own particular brand of scary. Holding on to your secrets will cause you to wear masks. Wearing masks will cause you to pretend that you're someone that you're not. Pretending that you're someone that you're not will prevent you from being who you've been created and gifted to be right here, right now. Yet, surrendering your secrets will force you to be vulnerable to other sin-stained, fractured, faulty human beings. And let's be real, that doesn't always turn out for the best. So please, no judgment, no condemnation, just you getting real. I'm inviting you to make a choice. You're either open to being real with yourself, with God, and with others, or you're resigned to just keep on keeping your secrets and wearing your masks. So which scary do you want to face? If you want to face the scary of surrendering your secrets and taking off your masks, the only way is to be transformed from the inside out. And the only way to be transformed from the inside out is to believe that transformation is a possibility. To believe that your secrets don't define you. To believe that today is the first day of the rest of your life. The good news is is that you've already taken the first step in this transformation. You've committed your life, secrets and all, to the care and control of Jesus. When you think about it, that's not as risky as surrendering your secrets to other people or even to yourself. Why is this the case? Well, first, Jesus is God, and God knows everything. Thus, God already knows all your secrets, leaving you with the reality that when you do surrender your secrets to God, you're simply surrendering something that's already known by God. And this is the good news. God still loves you and forgives you in spite of your secrets. This assurance of acceptance, love, and forgiveness is why surrendering your secrets to God is such an easy starting point. It's not that scary. To get real with yourself and with others is a much tougher proposition. The main reason being that, unlike God, you have no guarantees that yourself or others will still love you and forgive you when you do surrender your secrets. In fact, your experience has taught you that it's much safer to keep your secrets and masks than it is to surrender your secrets and masks. Dealing with yourself, it's true that you already know all your secrets. You already know what masks you're wearing. So, what's there to surrender? Well, surrender comes into play when you embrace your secrets as a legitimate part of you. Like it or not, you are who you are partially because of your secrets, not in spite of your secrets. You can't fully embrace and understand who you are right here, right now, without surrendering your secrets to yourself. And if you don't know who you are right here, right now, how can you ever imagine to be all that God has created you to be right here, right now? If you don't surrender your secrets to yourself, if you don't embrace your secrets as a legitimate part of who you are, you're doomed to see your secrets and conversely yourself as reprehensible, unforgivable, and unredeemable. Thus, you'll tuck your true self along with your secrets away in the dark corners of your subconsciousness. And you will continue to put on your masks to present to the world what you believe the world will accept. You'll spend so much time and energy attempting to never speak of any of it again. Out of sight, out of mind will be your mantra. Thus, you will keep your secrets instead of surrendering them out of your shame, guilt, and fear. And because of this, you'll keep wearing masks to present a pretend version of who you are to the world. Finally, dealing with others is probably the most daunting of all three aspects of surrendering your secrets. God loves you just the way you are. But God also loves you so much that they don't want to leave you just the way you are. And you've accepted that your secrets are a legitimate part of who you are. 
For knowing who you are right here, right now, is vital in the process of God not leaving you just the way that you are. But hold the presses. Surrendering your secrets to other fractured, faulty, sin-stained human beings is a totally different conversation. This is where it all gets really scary. For with other people, there's no guarantee that they will love you just the way you are. There's no guarantee that others will accept and embrace that your secrets are a vital part of who you are right here, right now. In fact, there's a chance that others will judge you, see you differently, and even reject you altogether once they know your secrets. This rejection, or at least the fear of this kind of rejection, is the very reason that you've kept your secrets all this time. You don't want to lose friends. You don't want to lose respect. You don't want to lose your standing. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to. And never forget, if what you want to is to not want to do something, you'll always figure out how not to do it. For you will always find a way to do what you want to. And therein lies the rub. You're keeping your secrets because you're afraid of what you might lose. You're holding on to your secrets so tightly so that you can hold on to the life you have right here, right now. Yet, and this is the point... The tighter that you hold on to your secrets, the longer it will take for you to truly discover your life right here, right now. It's another example of the upside-down way of Jesus. If you want to find your life, you must surrender all of your life, especially your secrets. The very thing that you're trying to preserve by keeping your secrets is the very thing that's preventing you from truly finding your life. Thus, the first step for you on this island is to surrender your secrets. Your secrets are informing that whole I'm not good enough perspective that's preventing you from being real. The guilt and shame you feel because of your secrets has been forgiven. Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for all of your sins, even your secret sins. Your secrets are devastating your relationships especially your relationship with God. The lie that you've embraced is that nobody will love you if they truly know you. Thus, you can't have intimate growing relationships with anyone, let alone God, because you're constantly holding on to and living into your secrets. You only have so much time, so many talents, and so much treasure in this life. And you can't afford to use any of these gifts covering up your secrets. For the more time, talents, and treasures you use covering up your secrets, the less time, talents, and treasures you will have to pursue real, lasting relationships with anyone, including God. Well, secrets also kill relationships because they force you to put on masks. Secrets force you to present to the world not who you really are, but who you want others to believe you really are. Secrets force you to alter your behaviors, your identity, and even your personality in order to keep your secret. Secrets force you to put on masks in order to hide your true self. For someone, some way, somewhere has convinced you that if anyone, let alone God, knew the real you, you would be rejected. The outward signs, behaviors, attitudes, and beliefs that you pretend to have in any given situation are called masks. Examples of masks are situations like a conservative politician who feels that they must rail against same-sex marriage in order to get votes, while hiding the fact that they're gay. A mask is worn by a woman who has kept a secret about having an abortion because she feels that her pro-life, anti-abortion church friends will reject her. A mask is worn by an alcoholic who desperately wants to keep up the appearance of a normal, functional life. A mask is worn so that you can fit in. Masks are worn so that you can belong and be accepted by a group of people within which you desire to fit. A group of people that you're convinced would reject you if they knew the truth. 
But masks aren't real. They're simply the reality that you desire to portray in any given situation. Thus, instead of giving you the desired results of acceptance and belonging, masks simply create separation and isolation, forcing you to be alone in a crowd, for you can't risk getting caught in a lie. You can't be real. Having said all of that, I will present to you on this island three hard and fast rules to being real with yourself, with God, and with others. Following these three rules will enable you to surrender your secrets and take off your masks once and for all. Following these three rules will ensure that you avoid hypocrisy on your journey to be called life. These rules will serve as a beacon in the storm a lighthouse signaling the rocky shores that you need to avoid. And these rules will be here whenever you need a refresher, a surrendering your secrets and taking off your masks tune-up. But all of that is for another day. Suffice it to say, at this point, my prayer and your assignment is for you to want to surrender your secrets and take off your masks. You've committed your life to the care and control of Jesus. You're saved. Now it's time to get to the work of being saved. Who will you be as a follower of Jesus? Will you be someone who is keeping secrets for fear of being judged or rejected? Or will you be someone who surrenders your secrets to yourself, to God, and to others? Never forget that secret keeping and mask wearing isn't a salvation issue. This is a complete life right here, right now issue. A follower of Jesus who makes the choice to hold on to secrets and to wear masks is still saved by grace through faith in Jesus. A secret keeping mask wearing follower of Jesus is forgiven by God, even if they don't forgive themselves. A secret-keeping, mask-wearing follower of Jesus will still live for eternity in heaven. What a secret-keeping, mask-wearing follower of Jesus will miss out on is the complete life that God intends for them to be living right here, right now. The choice is yours. God loves you just the way you are. But God loves you so much that they don't want to leave you just the way you are. Hey there, it's Sherry. Island Hopping is a production of Journey to Be Ministries and is sponsored by Beneva Christian Church in Sarasota, Florida. You can find Beneva Christian on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and the Beneva Christian app, as well as their website, benevachristian.com. If you'd like to contact David, my brother-in-law, just drop him an email at islandhoppingpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can text him by clicking on the link in the show notes.